And so somebody who has diabetes, what are they doing now to control this disease? Right now, basically, uh, there are three, thing, uh, three things they do. Right. At first, they try to control their blood glucose by diet and exercise, which is very difficult. Later on, we'll elaborate why it's unrealistic to expect people to control their blood glucose by just diet and exercise. And secondly, if diet and exercise doesn't work, uh, they rely on pharmaceutical drugs. If that doesn't work, they rely on uh, insulin injection. If insulin injection doesn't work, then people are facing despair. So there's no hope? No hope. So when you're talking about the pharmaceutical drugs, are there any kind of side effects involved with that? Every pharmaceutical drug has inherent risk. But for this diabetes uh, drug, uh, even though they are uh, over a short period of time, they are very valuable uh, for their therapeutic uh, value. So they do something positive yeah, in the fight they, against diabetes. Yeah, they, they control blood glucose temporarily. They are very right, good right, for that. Right. But they are good only for that. So over time, they lose their effectiveness. So after seven years, Yeah, ten, you mentioned seven years. Yeah. They start uh, losing 10 their years, uh, even though people increase the dosage, it doesn't work. So at that time, even though it doesn't control, it doesn't help to control blood sugar, mm. it only have uh, this uh, you know, horrible, horrible side effects, liver failure, kidney failure, brain, heart, just name it. So it sounds like at this point, with those things that you're listing off there, that they sound worse than the disease of diabetes itself. Oh, some people even argue that the half of the kidney failure of diabetic patients are actually from these drugs, not from diabetes. So we are talking about, we just don't know. We, so we reach a certain point where we don't know which one is, which one is which worse. Which one is worse, yeah. right. So, so it, it all sounds rather hopeless. And I've heard people say that there is no cure for diabetes. So in that case, we may as well just befriend this disease. What do you have to say about that? I came to this show to disagree uh, with that opinion. I know of a few actually uh, quite effective, quite safe, long-term solutions to the problems of diabetes. Oh, there are uh, many uh, you know, treatment, natural treatments, which are very safe, which have permanent effects, very good uh, treatments. So I just disagree completely with such an assertion that there's no hope. No, there is hope. And then I disagree when people say we have to be friends with the diabetes. It's, it is your enemy. It is not your friend. Right. So, Dr. Kim, it sounds like you've got some more interesting information to give us. In the meantime, let's take a short break. All of the symptoms have gone. Blood sugar level is down. And I've been on Eliotin for about six weeks. And this, I am sure, is what's brought those changes about. Welcome back. My guest today has been Dr. Kim, who's a PhD from MIT. Dr. Kim, thanks again for being with us. And we're talking about natural methods for fighting diabetes. And during the break, Dr. Kim, you spoke about something called P700. Can yes. you tell us more about what that is? Yes, P700 is a name uh, for the invention uh, invented by University of Calgary a long time ago, 10 years ago. So P700 is based on uh, natural herbs. And then uh, there are tremendous reports about its effects and its safety. So are you the inventor of P700? I'm not the inventor. So what is your relationship to it then? Uh, about 11 years ago. At that time, I was a professor at the University of Alberta, which is the neighbor uh, of the uh, University of Calgary. And then I was a, a, a professor of finance. And uh, I started my own financing company, and which became successful. The provincial government of Alberta invited me to invest in this technology. So I'm an investor. In the, in the technology, not the inventor of the technology. Right, right. So you're backing this, basically. Yes, I'm trying to. Yeah. So, so Dr. Kim, tell us about P700. What are its origins? How did it come to be? Oh, it's, it started, or oh, everything started about 20 years ago. There was a uh, Malaysian lady, a uh, 70-year-old lady, who was living in Calgary, seriously diabetic, very frail with this, all these uh, complications of diabetes kidney failure, her kidney is not functioning at all. Right. 
And then infection, a gangrene infection is so serious, uh, they have to amputate both of her legs. Wow. So she was uh, checked into the hospital uh, for the surgery. Right, so, so she was facing the amputation of both legs? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I gather that's not the end of the story. Yeah. Go on. So, so this uh, lady refused to have the operation. She decided to have uh, at least uh, some, some life with the dignity mm. rather than have uh, a, a, a bit longer uh, remaining life with both legs amputated. Right. Right. So she just refused the uh, uh, operation and checked herself out. And she went back to her uh, own uh, native country. Malaysia. Malaysia, yeah. right. And then uh, she tried all kinds of this folklore, herbal, anything, because she's... Uh, she had nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Right. But the story becomes interesting when she came back. Because what happened? After six months, she came back completely cured. Kidney problems are gone, diabetes gone, gangrene gone. This is, this is incredible. So uh, that's obviously uh, you know the the response of, of this university. So they were they just couldn't believe what they saw. So they begin to study uh, the treatments, uh, the methods, everything that she'd done while she was in Malaysia. That's correct. And right. then uh, so of, from the a few candidates, on a uh, uh, herb. Uh, surfaced as uh, the most most likely candidate. So they came down with the one that they felt was the real cause of her her amazing healing. Yeah, that's correct. And then the, at that time, uh, there was a nurse uh, who was observing uh, this whole process. And she herself was a serious diabetic. And she had to take 30 painkillers a day. You know that the diabetes, uh, diabetic people hold body aches, right? So she just... Uh, wanted to offer herself as, as an uh, object of this trial. So she offered, uh, try it on me, try it on me. So they tried uh, these herbs on her. She got completely cured. So she had the same results? Same results. And then the, they started animal studies. They studied a pharmacological study. They did a toxicity test and they did a clinical test. And then a, a provincial government of Alberta got involved. Right, so it caught their notice because obviously this was big. This yeah. was big news. Yeah, and then the actually the institute that started this invention uh, is a very uh, prestigious uh, diabetic research in North America. So uh, this is at the University of Calgary? Yeah, that particular institute is called uh, Julia McFarlane uh, Study uh, Center of Diabetic Studies. Right. Yeah, right. and then uh, from then on the government of Alberta invited me to uh, invest in to commercialize this invention. So in the beginning, all this development happened at the university. But after our company took over this invention, uh, the development uh, happened in our company. That's yeah. what happened.